And how times. often was the acid? Well, we took hundreds of trips together, so. And the tales of the nightly group sex? And there was at times uh, basically group sex, but it was always very planned because it was a means of control. When he'd have different men that he was trying to initiate into the family, try to bring them in, he would offer them whatever women he had. If a man wanted you, you went with him. You couldn't resist. He was an excellent pimp. One of the things that the women have said is that you used them as bait for the men. Isn't that what women do? Isn't that what women's for? Women receive men and reflect men. Man hold dominion up over woman. It's been that way since, uh, since we grunted and we came out of caves. You had them thinking you were Jesus Christ. Yeah. How did you do that? Just being myself. All men are Jesus Christ. Sometimes he would reenact the crucifixion when we were on LSD. And it was very realistic. You mean pretend that he was oh, being yeah. nailed? Yeah, and go through the whole thing. And then make the connections of man, son, son of man, you know. And then the questions would begin, um, would you die for me? Did you ask them to die for you? Would they die sure, for you? Sure, sure, sure. That's basic Christian philosophy. Finally, one night at the ranch, we were all sitting around in our little evening get together and he started to say um bow like sheep and every single one of us did it exactly at the moment that he said they were no longer part of the gentle counterculture they had begun to live manson's reality and his dreams like making it big in the music world Dennis Wilson and the Beach Boys had recorded one of his songs. For a while, Manson, the ex-con, seemed inches away from sharing in the life he had only seen from the outside. Though he never got the record contract he wanted, Manson says, several times he came to this glamorous house on the hill occupied by a prominent recording executive. They didn't have anything that I, do, that I didn't have. They had a lot of money, they had a lot, a lot of fame. Of money. I got all the money I need. I'm a gangster, woman. I take money. He was a man who I think felt that society had totally dumped him. I think he felt a rage and a hatred for society. And the women say early in 1969, Manson found an anthem for his rage. The Beatles' new White Album with songs like Helter Skelter, Piggies, about the white establishment in the suburbs clutching their knives and forks. And Revolution Number no. 9, Manson told them it was written for him. Somewhere in one of the songs we were supposed to hear them saying his name or something. And you know, we'd listen to it over and over and over. Number 9, number 9, number 9. Number 9, number 9. Number nine. You know, and then he was nine. real... Um, number 9. Involved in Revelations 9. He said the biblical prophecy of the apocalypse was at hand. And he said news reports about riots and black militancy proved it. He called on his followers to get ready for what he called Helter Skelter. Basically, he thought Helter Skelter would be what? It was going to be a racially motivated revolution and that the blacks were going to control and take over the power and the only way to survive the coming holocaust manson said was to prepare for war for that they needed money did you take part in the burglaries i only did one my father's i robbed my father's house he began testing to see which of his followers had courage and obedience and stand up against tree and he'd throw knives at me he's thrown hatchets at people do you trust me? Do you love me enough? You know, stand up against that tree. So that when he threw the knife, you know, I, I, did, I did that kind of thing without hesitation. 
Manson said death was not the end of life, it was just another high. Although the women didn't know it, by the summer of 69, one of Manson's men had already murdered someone. And Manson himself had shot and nearly killed a black drug dealer. He began to feel very paranoid. We started to have a lot more guns at the ranch and knives, and people were on lookouts. We were pretty much all running on definite fear. And he asked us constantly, each one of us, you know, will you die for me? Will you be my finger on a hand? Will you, you know, will you be me? I want your will. August the 8th, 1969. The women say by that day, Manson had made it clear they might have to ignite Helter Skelter themselves. But Manson says he was mostly concerned with bailing a follower out of jail and called a meeting to say, get the money. They said, how do we do it? I said, don't ask me how to do it. I don't want to be no part of no conspiracy. But however you do it, do it and get it done now. If it don't get done, then I'll move on it. Do it. Get it done. And these were people that you had talked about, Helter Skelter, you had talked about, about bringing the vengeance of, of the world down on people. You had told sure. them. Sure, You yeah, had told them that to certainly. kill others was yes, to give them life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah. you didn't expect them to go out and do this. No, no. Wait, whoa. I don't live in anticipation, woman. I live on now. Charlie came and woke me up. And he said, get up. I want you to go somewhere. And so I did. Why did you do it? I was following Charlie's orders. Because they were Charlie's orders. 